fans of the spin-off manga My Hero Academia Vigilantes got some sad news as October 2023, at least here in North America, published the final volume of the superhero epic. I'm going to discuss it and break it down and talk about what it means for My Hero Academia at large. But before that, hi, my name is Jacob Airy. Welcome to the Studio Jake Vidcast, where I talk about all things pop culture. Be sure to like, share, leave me a comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subs. I'm well over 960, so I'm in the home stretch here. So every single click of that subscribe button really helps me out. Thank you. All right. It's true. The... Uh, my Hero Academia Vigilante's superhero spinoff manga has officially ended. And I'm, it's no secret that I enjoy this series. I've talked about it before. I've actually mentioned it on a few other live streams where I've guest starred. And it's just such a shame. But I understand. I, one of the things I like about manga is most of the time they do tend to have a conclusive ending, even if their anime adaptions don't. And so... You know, it's what exactly is it for those of you unfamiliar? So I make no secret that I'm a fan of My Hero Academia. It's a manga and an anime about a character named Deku as he um, it becomes the apprentice of Japan's greatest hero, All Might. And All Might transfers his powers to Deku. And then he soon realizes that the abilities that All Might have are not just limited to super strength and sort of energy manipulation, but he's got several visages of other heroes within him it is very interesting uh tale and it was first released in 2014 uh through shonen jump which most people know shonen jump they have been publishing all kinds of amazing manga throughout the years as far back as the 80s i believe maybe even further and it has been an exciting ride. I first got on to My Hero Academia because I'm a big superhero fan. You can see from the backdrop, I've got Batman and Spider-Man up there. And, of course, uh, on this side, you can see the My Hero Academia wall scroll I have. And um, I kind of got tired of the staleness that Marvel, DC, and other larger comic book companies were producing. And so that's why I started watching My Hero Academia. And then most recently, I started getting into the manga. It's been very exciting. But along my journey through My Hero Academia, I discovered a, a series called My Hero Academia Vigilantes. And it is a spinoff prequel of the original series, which, oh, by the way, the original series is created by, uh, he he writes and illustrates it, a man named Kohei Horikoshi. And props to you, sir. You are one of the best superhero writers um, in modern times. So anyway, My Hero Academia Vigilantes, it has been going on since... Um, has been going on since 2016. In Japan, it actually concluded in July 2022, but America didn't get the... You could read the chapters online, but we didn't get the collected version until October of this year, of 2023. And it's been a, it's been a wild, wild ride. So it takes place prior to the um, events of All Might meeting Deku, although in the middle of it, you meet Deku. And so... It goes into that. It leads up to certain events within it. And it follows a young superhero named The Crawler. He is a, a neighborhood superhero. And at first, he's just kind of a do-gooder. He's kind of, He pushes people out of the way of out-of-control cars. He helps ladies cross the street. He gets cats out of uh, trees with his abilities that he calls slide and glide. Which later he finds out he's not actually sliding he actually can control the air pressure around his body which allows him to fly it allows him to even stick to things very similar to spider-man he also gets the ability later to weaponize it and he can fire out the air pressure and he runs into a vigilante named knuckle duster who doesn't have powers you find out later that his powers were stolen from him by um one, uh, all for one who is all might's greatest enemy and he's basically just become this kind of punisher batman-esque type vigilante and he begins to mentor the crawler and train him and whatnot and along the way they meet another vigilante named pop step who she didn't actually want to be a vigilante she kind of just wanted to be 
like a masked singer. She was using it to get money to go to college. But then she acts, she just, in concert with Knuckle Duster and the Crawler, she ends up becoming the third in their trio. And you find out that she's slowly falling in love with the Crawler. And you hear the backstories of some of the characters, like, for instance, Ingenium, who is the um, older brother of a character from the original one, but his powers get stolen um, by a vigil- by another vigilante turned villain called Stain. And so because of this, you don't really get to see him be her- be a hero, even though he's one of the top Japanese superheroes. So in My Hero Academia Vigilantes, you actually get to see him in action. And it was really cool to see that character expanded upon. Now, there were some low points in the show. There was a few back backflashes that I thought were a little dull. There were a few elongated moments of sh- of drama you also erase their head as a character in the in the story he's another superhero from the main uh series and he has an appearance and they have some uh, flashbacks uh, to his past with present mike and that kind of got old i was kind of wanting it to focus on the crawler so not by, by no means a perfect series but an exciting one and now that it's completed i highly recommend everyone if you go to wherever books are sold or you go to you know if they're if you're fortunate enough to have an anime store in your area i highly recommend this series now obviously they're collected editions so they're going to be a little bit more than buying a floppy comic book but they're a little bit cheaper than a graphic novel so look at it that way there's 15 total in the united states and it is a really good series that you can Um, Get on if you're a fan of Spider-Man, if you're a fan of The Punisher, if you are um, a gal and you want uh, a superhero one, uh, there's plenty of awesome female characters in the story. Pop Step is really cool. One of the things I like about it is it doesn't bother with political correctness, so the men actually act like men and the women actually act like women. And since uh, The Crawler is older, My Hero Academia, it's very similar to Teen Titans, and most of the characters are teens. With Vigilantes, they're in college, so it deals with a little bit more uh, darker themes at places. Not through the whole thing, but there are some darker moments. And including the backstory of Stain. That's, uh, it doesn't go through his whole backstory, but it gives the events leading up to him going from hero to vigilante to the hero killer. And I think it's just exciting. I'm disappointed that it's over. And I want to give props to um, the writer, Hideyuki Furuhashi, and, his, and the artist, Benton Court. They did such a good job throughout the series of really bringing it to life and making it fun and exciting for nerds like me who are missing the old days of comic books. You know, we have to go to indie or we have to go to manga now. And if you want to read more superhero manga, there's other stories like Shy, like One Punch Man, and like I said, the main My Hero Academia series. There's also a spinoff called My Hero Academia Team Up Missions, which is still ongoing. They just released their third volume uh, and in the United States, I should clarify, and it's a lot of fun too. It's pretty much, if you're looking for a way to read about superheroes and you also get a brand new experience. One of the good things about the um, stuff coming from Japan is they don't reboot. So like, you know, Marvel and DC, they reboot every couple of years. DC does it like every five, although recently it feels like they're doing it every year. Marvel kind of does soft reboots, although every once in a while they'll do a major reboot that kind of streamlines their timeline into modern days. And they with My Hero Academia, you can start at volume one. You don't have to worry about, oh, is it, should I do this writer's run or that writer's run? Typically with manga, it's the same writer or collaborative effort. Sometimes they have more than one uh, person working on it and they have kind of an overseer. That's kind of how Dragon Ball Super is now. Akira Toriyami is now the editor of Dragon Ball Super. He doesn't, um, and I think he helps like develop timelines, but he's not in it every day. You know, cut him a break. He's, well, he's earned his rest, but. Anyway, um, back to the point at hand, I just want to say My Hero Academia Vigilantes has been an incredibly exciting adventure. I'm sad that it's over. If you want to go back and see my reviews, I reviewed every single volume as they came out in the United States. So definitely 
uh, check that out at studiojakemedia.com. If you are curious and would like to advice on manga and where to start, I can definitely give you some uh, suggestions. I'm more of an anime watcher than I am a manga reader, but I am starting to get more into manga. Uh, just anime has pulled me in. I've been I'm mainly anime throughout the years. Um, and then I picked up My Hero Academia Vigilantes and I started reading uh, Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody because that anime desperately needs a second season. That hasn't happened, so I'm just reading the manga. But those two volumes definitely pulled me in and I started reading more. And I'm very excited to see what comes next for the world of My Hero Academia. I understand that uh, Mr. Horikoshi has had some uh, health problems, but I hope that he continues to work th through those because the amount of superhero action that he has brought not just to Japan but to the United States and the world at large has been very exciting and I look forward to seeing what is next. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up, that you'll leave me a comment, tell me what you think, that you'll share it out with your friends, and of course, consider subscribing to Studio Jake. I cover all kinds of nerd and pop culture topics, including film, television, anime, comic books, and so much more. I hope that you'll also head over to my main website, studiojakemedia.com, where I have even more news, views, and commentary. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, head over to my Locals page. That's studiojakemedia.locals.com. It's the best way to support me. I'm trying to build a little community there. I have exclusive reviews and articles, so definitely head over there and check it out. And I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.